Welcome to the general chemistry section of our practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 6 to 10. So first I'll show you guys a question so that you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's question 6, question 7, question 8, question 9, and 10. Now let's go through the question together. In question six, this is an acid, HX, has an acid dissociation constant of seven times 10 to the negative three. Which of the following is the expected pH of a solution that contains equal concentrations of HX and then X minus, which is its conjugate base? So when we have equal concentrations of an acid and its conjugate base, that means that we are at a pH that is equal to the pKa. So we're asked, What's the expected pH of this solution? Well, the expected pH would be equal to the pKa. And then the pKa we can get from the Ka, which is given to us the acid dissociation constant. That's Ka. So P of something is just a negative log. So negative log of 7 times 10 to the negative 3, that ends up being around 2.2. So B is our correct answer. In question seven, it says pi bonding for a covalent bond requires which of the following? So we are talking about pi bonding, pi bonding. And we know that when we have between two atoms, a single bond, that's going to be a sigma bond. But then if we have additional bonds, those are caused by unhybridized p orbitals coming together and forming rather than a sigma bond, a pi bond. So if I had a double bond between these two, that would be a pi bond and then the red one would be a sigma one. And then if I had a triple bond, that would be an additional second pi bond. So option A is saying pi bonding requires roughly equi equivalent electronegativities between two atoms. No, that's not correct. The example I gave it are two of the same atom, but I could have bonding like this, for example, take place. So those have different electronegativities. So no, that's not something which is required. We're asked what is required. Option B is saying roughly equivalent atomic radii between the two atoms. No, the radii can be pretty different just like the electronegativities can. Option C is saying the presence of an aqueous environment. Nope, there are many organic compounds that can have additional bonds, meaning pi bonds. So that is not a requirement either. And finally, option D is correct. It's saying the presence of a double or a triple bond. Yes, that's pretty much the definition of a pi bond. It's an additional bond on top of a sigma bond, which means a double bond or a triple bond. So that would be a pi bond. In question eight, which of the following is false regarding phase diagrams? So we are talking about phase diagrams. And here is an example of one. This is the phase diagram for water. Phase diagram. So just looking at that, you can see that on our axes we have pressure and temperature. Over here on the left we have the solid phase. In the middle is a liquid phase. And then over here is the gaseous phase. And there are lines that say that when you cross the line we're going from one phase to another. So under these conditions at a certain pressure and temperature, water will exist as one of three forms, solid, liquid, or gaseous. But then if we are at the line, then between the two phases, we are at equilibrium. So for example, if we were at this point, we would be at equilibrium between the liquid phase and the gaseous phase. And then when you come over here to this region at the top right, the supercritical fluid, it's not really either gaseous or liquid. It's kind of hard to define the phase that this, this substance is at. And then we also have so the critical point, if you go beyond that, that's where you become a super critical fluid, where it's kind of undefined. The triple point over here is the point at which you're at equilibrium between all three phases. So those are the main things in a phase diagram. Now we're asked which of the following is false regarding phase diagrams. Option A is saying three phases exist at the triple point. Nope, but this is something which is true. Option B is saying that they, they display the relationship of pressure and temperature for a compound. Yes, that is true. That's what we have on our axes. Option B, or sorry, option C is saying at sufficiently high pressure and temperature, all substances will exist in the gas phase. 
And option D is saying solid and gas do not exist in equilibrium with each other. So option C, at sufficiently high pressure and temperature, all substances will exist in the gas phase. Yes, this is also something which is correct. If you get any substance, even those which you are never really accustomed to thinking about as gases, you usually think of them as maybe solid. If you put them at a high enough pressure and temperature, yes, they do have some part of their phase diagram, which is the region at which they exist as a gas. So that does exist for all substances. And option D is the one which is incorrect. It's saying solid and gas do not exist in equilibria with each other, but no, they do. So usually you're used to thinking, especially when we think about water, as something going from solid to the liquid and then afterwards going to the gas. However, you can see over here, we have solid at the, of this arrow that I've drawn at the bottom left, we have solid at the left side, gaseous phase at the right side, and then we can cross over directly from solid to gaseous. If we keep a low pressure and then start increasing the temperature, we can cross directly from solid to gas rather than going through the liquid intermediate. And so it is true that solid and gas do exist in, the, in an equilibrium. So option D is a false statement about phase diagrams. In question nine, we're asked which of the following is not a colligative property. So a colligative property is a property of solutes in a solvent that only depends on the concentration of the solutes, not their actual, not their properties. So I can have either salt or sugar added to water and it should change its properties in some way that depends only on how many particles are present. So boiling point elevation, it is. So we're asked which one is not a colligative property. That is a colligative property. So is freezing point depression. Density is not. And then vapor pressure is. Vapor pressure is pretty much directly related to boiling point as well. But option C, density, no. The density of any substance is related to the actual properties of the substance. So water has a specific density, salt has a specific density, and then we can have salt water, which will have its own density that's different than sugar water depending on the interactions that are present and the properties of the the mixture that we're talking about so it's definitely not a colligative property and finally for question 10 it says for the nuclear reaction where we have this potassium going to calcium which of the following is missing from the product side so what is missing for this reaction well we see in this reaction at the top we have um, we have the atomic weight which is protons pr plus neutrons. And at the bottom, we have the atomic number. We see that the weight at the top seems to be the same, but at the bottom, the atomic number has changed. It went from 19 to 20, which means that we gained a proton. So what happened here is that a neutron turned into a proton. And then of course, our atomic weight is going to remain the same, but a neutron turned into a proton. So what type of reaction is that? That's beta minus decay, which means that we should also have release of an electron. So if over here in this reaction, we also added this plus zero minus one E, you can see that the reaction is balanced now because we take this 20 and then the minus one, if you add those together, they add up to the 19 that is present on the left side. So now all of those numbers are balanced. So this is option A would be correct for question 10. That's it for the questions in this video. If you enjoyed what you, what you saw, make sure to check out our course. The link is in the description below. In that course, we go through a lot more questions just like in this video and go through all the different answer options explaining why each one is correct or incorrect. Other than, other than that, make sure to subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with the videos that we post here. And that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.